You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. Time to kick off another broadcast week here on the Options Insider Radio Network. We will keep your ear holes full throughout the week with options-oriented content. That is our pledge to you. My name is Mark Longo from the aforementioned network, as well as, of course, on the ever exciting theoptionsinsider.com. Glad to see so many of you have been jumping on board. Some of you right before the showtime, I see you out there joining us on the old pro and plus side. Glad to see so many of you out there. I'd, I'd name you all, but I know a lot of some of you like your privacy, so I'll just keep you secret. But uh, we love you all out there. If you're curious what's going on over there, all the cool stuff popping off. Got a hot new pro Q&A coming up tomorrow with the once in future Dr. Vic. Seemed like a good time to dive into all things volatile. Volatility. He's a good one to do that with. And of course, on Friday, we got options oddities. We had the Rock Lobster on with us last week. It was really fun. So if you're missing all that, the options insider.com slash plus or slash pro, both of you will get you to more information about what's going on there. You can choose what works best for you. If you like to just sit back at home and consume your stuff on demand, you don't need extra options content in your life. Well, then we got you covered with the regular old stuff hitting you pretty much multiple times a day as well. So however you like to get your content, however much you like, and if you like it immediate, of course, all of our plus and pro people can join us live there as well. So if you like it immediately in your ear holes, we got you covered there. However you like to consume your options oriented content, we have got you covered here, so check it out over there, theoptionshunter.com, slash pro, pro, easy for me to say, slash pro or slash plus is the way to kick off your journey, just like so many of you have done already. And speaking of kicking off our journeys, it is time to kick off our broadcast week. You know how we do that here on the old OB. It is time for our Guess That 80s Wrestlers entrance music. And I will say this, this is just kind of, I know I've said it before, I'll have to say it again due to many of your inquiries, but as they're queuing up the music for us here, I will just remind you that we may be cute. We know we're sexy, but we're not your options boy toys. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I've got the looks. The drives are go wild. I've got the mood. That really move I said chill. Up and down their spine. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm <laughs> I wish I could see his face because I know the Rock Lobster's head is just exploding with what the heck was that? Yes, that was our 80s wrestler entrance music for the week. Do you know who that is? Let's see if you can play along. First, 
since he got it last week. <laughs> Somehow, I guess because they said the name in the music, he was able to get it last week. He gets to go first. Yes, we are joined once again by the 80s wrestling fan extraordinaire, none other than the Rock Lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, A, welcome back to the show. And B, most importantly, can you name that 80s wrestler, sir? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in my head. I have two wrestlers. Somehow I'm calling their names. Randy Savage or Ric Flair, I think. Wow, I don't both. think it's a Randy Savage. <laughs> I'm going to go with Ric Flair. Those are both actually 80s wrestlers, so you get points for that. You do know, too. That's impressive. Unfortunately, neither of them are sexy boys, but <laughs> 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 that music just cracks me up whenever I hear it. So you get points for being within the genre, sir, but perhaps okay, not the right. But something. hey, you got the Million Dollar Man last week. I mean... Just coast on that for a while. That's a pretty good one. It's a pretty deep cut for a guy like you, sir. So I, I was impressed, even though we did set it up so that he said the name for you so we, we could ease you in. <laughs> All right. I know Two Saws over there. He's champing at the bit. You know he knows this one. Of course, Uncle Mike Tusaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. A, welcome back to the program. And B, are you a sexy boy, sir? I am not. <laughs> so... You know, I, I got to say, I, I, I have a lot of respect and admiration for every wrestler that you've put on uh, thus far. But this is the first one that uh, I really didn't like that much. So it is Shawn Michaels. Um, and uh, can't say I was a fan of Shawn Michaels. I think that, uh, don't get me wrong, he played his role. He did what he could do. But um, not a Shawn Michaels fan. I mean, he, um, he, he's okay. I, I respect what he did. But um no, can't say I'm a Shawn Michaels fan. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that you just annoyed me, quite honestly. So I guess that he did his job. I'll say that was his gimmick, right? He was he was a heel for a lot of his. Even though I think this guy kind of lived his gimmick for quite a while out there. But yes, you're right. It was the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels out there. You see him today, you're like, really? Are you a sexy boy? But it's hard to imagine the old days of the flowing locks and all the other stuff like that. But yes, that was, looks like our, our listeners, our pro members got it as well, including our newest pro member. Mr. Unlimited out there, he chimed in in the chat saying some sweet chin music. So, yes, he knows. He knows what we're talking about that, of course. His finishing move, the super kick, which now everybody does. It's kind of like the DDT. It's just become standard nomenclature. Oh, by the way, before we keep rolling off of wrestling, really quick, Mr. Uncle Mike. We had Ted DiBiase's music on the show last week, right, Uncle Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, so this weekend I'm walking past the living room. My son's watching a wrestling pay-per-view. Guess whose music I hear hit right as I walk by? No way. Yes. DiBiase's yes. Back. Yes. The million dollars. I hear the laughing and I hear money, but just exactly what we played last week. Ted DiBiase was back. I guess there were two guys doing like a money oriented gimmick and he was there with the million dollar belt to decide who was the winner and be the arbiter of who was the best. So there you go. We invoked him by playing him on the show last week, Mike. I think that just proves Vince McMahon, you're a listener, and we are honored to have you as a listener, Mr. McMahon. You know, he heard that show, and he's like, you know what? I think it is time to bring back the old Ted DiBiase. So there we go. We have some power on the show. Maybe Shawn Michaels will make it. Of course, he has been around, I think, a little bit of late, but uh, <laughs> maybe he'll make a return appearance for some sweet chin music as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, let's get into it. The market's getting some sweet chin music on the old chin today. It kind of depends where you're looking. It's coming into showtime. We are seeing a relatively rare color in the S&P, which is red. Most of the major indices are off S&P is off about a third of a percent. Dow is feeling a lot more red, off about three quarters of a percent. NASDAQ's kind of shrugging off all that noise and saying, nah, not for me. I'm going to go the other direction, up about four tenths of a point. But all this kind of mixed noise on the screen to kick things off, kind of getting the vol products a little bit twitchy, a little bit nervous out there. Of course, they're getting some of their weekend back as well. They kind of, a little bit of that weird dance they always do in the early part of Monday session. So a bit of a combo, giving a little bit of lift across the board to the vol space. VIX kicking off the show was right around a 17, even that puts it up about half a point from our last show. VIX at 117 and a half. That's pretty much unched <laughs> from our last show. And VXX was at 31 and a half. Let's see, where did it go out right before 
we kicked off the show there was yeah pretty much around on 31 and a half so that's pretty much down about three quarters or so of a point we'll see if we can get back up to that you know a little bit lower into the mid 30s again it was threatening the 30 handle not too long ago having lost nigh on a quarter of its value in just a few weeks after reverse splitting listeners so some impressive downside on the books for vxx of late and of course vol q aka the at the money vol of the nasdaq 100 that about a 16 and a half so we got a 16 handle cooking out there in NASDAQ. It's about down about three quarters or so, about a point or so from where it was this time last show. So a lot to unpack. Uncle Mike, you are our reigning sexy boy here on the show today. <laughs> That's not going to get old at all. What's uh, what's lighting up your tape out there in a not really Uncle Mike kind of market, sir? Uh, I mean, as much as I hate to say it, uh, that coin thing that you just take a bit of, what's it called? A oh, Bitcoin. Uh, that's really what's lighting it up, it looks like right now. And that uh, <clears throat> I guess you can use Bitcoin to buy Teslas again, or you will be, you might be soon. So um, I guess uh, Elon Musk is okay with uh, whatever he was upset about before. Yeah, so. what is this nonsense when Bitcoin allows 50% of miners to use clean energy? Like, wh- how are you going to measure? These are the kind of nonsensical things he throws out there that clearly have market moving impact and ramifications as a result, but have no tangible meaning to them outside of that there's, there's no way to measure that it's this is the kind of thing that i think frustrates a lot of people in the crypto space i'm just putting that out it it frustrates me and i'm not even in the crypto space but uh, it's i think it's just elon musk just kind of hanging out and saying hey guys watch this then it puts out a tweet and then uh then uh, all of a sudden hey guys go buy some bitcoin real quick okay Okay, you guys bought all your Bitcoin? Okay. And he puts out another tweet, makes it go up, and then he just kind of laughs about it. I, that, that's what it feels like right now and, and with what he's doing with it. But uh, who am I to judge Elon Musk? But we're seeing that, and I think that that's really the, ma- the biggest mover of all the macro assets that I watch. Uh, and uh, silver's flat on the day. Uh, bonds are selling off a little bit today, <clears throat> but I think it's just kind of some profit taking and that um, we're still 1.5 is kind of the area with which uh, the 10 year seems to want to be right now. So we're not getting a lot of movement from it. And um, what's concerning me about the S&P right now is that we're not getting large moves up. We're just getting these tiny little moves up. Uh, we had the all time highs on Thursday. But uh, for right now, uh, it's it's like we've just been magnetized, and the magnet's getting a little bit weaker, it appears, but we seem magnetized to that 4,200 mark in the S&P. Now, I know we were at 43, closer to the 43 half recently, but uh, it just seems like we can't get away from it, and we've been here for quite a while now. So um, I'd like to see the market do something already, but uh, for right now, we're... we're that's where we are. Um, the VIX got a little bit of a bid going on it today uh, around the 17 handle. So uh, excited to hear Andrew's take on that. Don't want to steal his thunder in a little bit. Uh, so we do have that happening. But for right now, um, I, I th- the way with which I'm looking at this market is that I'm just putting in, I'm just long some out of the money butterflies right now. So in case we do get a rally, I'll participate on it. But uh, I'd like to see uh, a one to 2% pullback within a week before I start selling some put spreads or anything along those lines. Now, don't get me wrong, we're still selling puts and uh, right and covered calls in our triple income portfolio. We still have our long stocks with which we're in and for our long-term investors. But for right now in the aggressive portfolio, I just, I don't feel comfortable writing a put spread at this point in time. I'd like to see uh, a little bit more of a pullback. But what's frustrating about it is that I've been saying this for about a month now and uh, I've been missing out on some beloved time decay premium, but I just, I can't justify the risk at this point. So for now, we'll just uh, stay long and uh, mitigate the long premium risk as best we can. All right, let's roll on out now to the dark and stormy shores of Maine, where we are joined once again by a guy who's always collecting theta. He's always dark side. He is the rock lobster himself from his palatial and foreboding fortress on the shores of Maine. Mr. Rock Lobster, you sexy boy, you. Welcome back to the program. And what is lighting up your tape on this uh, beginning of the week where it seems like Val could maybe, dare I say it, potentially catch a bit? I'm still trying to get over that that theme music from wrestling. 
<laughs> so is that what they play when the guy walks down? <laughs> yes, that's what they played. He was just a sexy boy, <laughs> but he wasn't your boy toy. <laughs> Heartbreak kid. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I have to say, doing this show, you learn something every week. Just there's, <laughs> there's no... There's no hiding that fact. And you see him today, you're like, really? He's bald. He looks a, a pale shadow of his. Wrestling is a hard life. Let me just put it that way. I, I guess so. And also probably the after parties on wrestling is probably uh, pretty hard, too. <laughs> Um, so, but I will say this for Shawn Michaels, he did get his life together. And so he's, he's at least trying to get himself together. So I will give the guy credit for that, but I try and judge people solely on their wrestling ability. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty st- strict, hard, harsh critic. And as a wrestler, um, you know, he, he was, I, I feel he was overrated. That was my opinion of him. But as a man, the guy is trying to get his life together. And uh, I will, I do think the guy deserves credit for that. That's more than a lot of those guys can say. So I will say this, Uncle Mike. So it's fair to say in the ongoing Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels debate, you fall on the Bret Hart side. I, you know, Bret was, re- yeah. I mean, it, I, I, as a wrestler, no question, Bret Hart's a better wrestler with the sharpshooter. Uh, I'll take the sharpshooter over sweet chin music any day. I mean, that it, it, I don't know how anyone could argue with that. Yeah, I'm with you. Pink and black attack all the way. But I digress, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster. We've, we've sucked you down another scary rabbit hole. <laughs> you're, you're just like, what are you talking about? So uh, why, why don't you take us into the world of Vixen? What is catching your eye out there? As like I said before, and I dare I say it again, maybe if I say it twice, it shall come to pass. Potentially, Ball may be catching a bit. Um, I, you know what? I'm looking today. So uh, for, for a brief moment in time, the Vix... Uh, the June 23 calls at a nickel bid. Um, they're all gone now. Um, although the uh, although um, almost all puts in the vault complex are cheaper than they were uh, Friday. So it's just I look at a kind of collection of puts and goodies and stuff like that. So Friday was a great day. I sold a ton, got rid of a ton of stuff, um, which is always happy. Uh, we don't have that single digit vol president anymore, unfortunately. So you have to uh, temper your expectations. Like puts you used to be able to sell for ten bucks. You're now happy to get <laughs> two fifty or three bucks, and um, you're quite thrilled with it now. Um, but uh, yes, so yeah, we do have this uh, a bit of a. So here's the thing that I would say: like two sides, like his his. Let's say his his spidey senses are bothering him that he thinks he should be selling some. Um, uh, he wants to sell some SPX put spreads, but he can't really quite justify it because he's not getting the price action that he wants. And I think on, on a day like today, like so money is just flowing into tech, right? Uh, tech and biotech, from what I can see on my screen, pretty, pretty solid, right? Really, really solid all the way across the board. Um, but the spy is not doing anything like commodities are kind of down. Oils like banks don't look like they're doing very much here either. Um, so I, what is it like uh, like your uh, vanilla rotation day kind of it feels like. Um, and, but again, like but VIX. So the, a day like today, I would expect the bid for VIX. You have the weekend effect bidding it up and then like balls kind of slowly sort of peter out during the day. And. And, and we're not getting that. Uh, like the, we kind of started with a bid for VIX this morning, and it hasn't gone away. And it's kind of, uh, I would say, it's not as it's not as pronounced as it was this morning, but it's still there. So, I guess long story short is uh, we'll see if this if this continues. But you know. Um, the, the bid for VIX is like you're not really getting that supporting move from the S&P 500. So we'll take it's it's not as bullish as I would like it to be considering, you know, where the market is and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now, maybe it's just a bunch of money going back to Bitcoin. Everybody ran out of commodities today and into Bitcoin. That's certainly possible. Um, but I would say the bid for VIX is curious on a day when vol should be re, would basically start to reset after the weekend effect, and you would start to see maybe a little bit of VIX going down. It's not, which I find curious. So just everybody can take that how they think, but um, it's 
It's, a, it's the first step in a, in a curious bid for VIX, we'll call it. For a curious bid for VIX. It is indeed a curious bid for VIX. We'll see if it's a real bid or if it's kind of just some of that early Monday weekend noise. And once we see you know, the markets pick a direction today and we see it looks like maybe some of the sell-off may be mitigating already. We'll see by the end of the show if this bid is real or if it's kind of just like, eh. Yeah, we see a lot on the early parts of the sessions here. Let's see what we're seeing from an overall vol perspective. This is materializing into any real appreciable numbers here on the screen. VIX actually doing some paper almost at exactly half of its ADV, which is continuing to tick up, if ever so slightly, up to 610,000 contracts right now. So managing to sustain its momentum north of the 600K strike. And right now, about 302,000 contracts on the tape. So it's on on track to at least probably hit that today. We'll see if it can get there. SPY, similar levels, closing in on 2 million, about 1.85 million. The ADV out there has actually ticked down a little bit. It's been north of 4 million for quite some time at about 3.91 million right now. So SPY getting a little bit lighter. The S, 809,000. The S kind of going the other way. The S getting more robust. Usually it's around 700, 700, maybe 50,000 right now. So that's a decent paper for the S. The ADV has been kind of locked at one and a quarter million for a while out there. So the S looking pretty firm today. The Q's at about half of its ADV as well. 616,000 contracts on the tape. The ADV about one and a quarter million. So the S, excuse me, the Q's can do some paper. And so far, at least right now, they're on board for about half of it. And the small caps, at least through the IWM lens, is about 302,000 contracts. The ADV right around 550 out there. But I know what you're all waiting to hear. You're all waiting to hear. The mad breakdown that is the top 10 most active single names out there. This is kind of where all the action, all the noise, all the madness in the market of late has been kind of fixated on this. Can the crazy meme kids once again topple the Titans, the juggernauts, the Leviathans that are Apple and Tesla, at least from an options volume perspective? Well, let's find out together, shall we? Number 10 cost you 226,000 contracts. To break into the top 10 most active today, that's a pretty decent clip. And B, that gets you all the way out to my old stomping grounds of Intel. Good old INTC making it back on the top 10 today. By the way, they're also looking pretty call bias. Let's pull up, see what's going on in Intel, because they're probably going to they're probably gonna win our biased award today for 91% of that paper coming on the call side of the ledger. That's the most biased paper we've seen on the top 10 in a while here. Actually, the stock's down a little bit today, so not a huge upside move for Intel, but something something driving some action out there in Intel today, maybe getting some of that meme kid love. I don't know. I don't know what's driving all this paper out there, but a lot of call paper in Intel. Number nine, back out to the meme kids. It's Riot, 229,000. This is kind of half meme, half crypto, obviously, so it kind of hits both worlds. Good for 229,000 contracts, only 77% of that in the call side. So that would usually maybe be enough for number one, but not today. Intel taking that roost number eight. Yeah, it's Clover. <laughs> the old Clove, the newest addition to the meme stock bonanza. 248,000, so number eight, right around quarter of a million contracts. And 74% come, of that coming on the call side of the ledger. Number seven, it's Palantir. It's always lurking up there these days. 283,000 contracts and a pretty robust 81% of that coming on the call side. So once again, the top 10, it's still all calls all the time. Number six, it's kind of the newest addition to the meme pantheon out there. It's the formerly sleepy name now known as Ford. Ford, good for 289,000. Back below the 15 handle listeners, down about a third of a point or about two and a half percent today, right around a 1490 or so. And so, yeah, all those folks who were just we were just talking about it on the odd block, excuse me, the Options Oddities show with the Rock Lobster on Friday, people couldn't get enough of upside and forward. We talked June, I think, 17 halves, 18s and 19s and all the way out to August for 30,000 of the AUG 20s. People could not get enough of these, at least so far right now. Those are looking like a little bit of a bridge too far. And a lot of them have already we talked about the 20s that already lost some of their value. Just by the time we had talked about them and those other ones that were June, those are looking pretty rough right now. I suppose June 18th, remember we talked about them on the show, listeners, we said we probably would have rather sold those for 20 cents rather than buy them. Well, that certainly appears to have been the better side of that trade right now. But Ford right now, 289,000. I I put it out to you. You guys be the arbiters. Is Ford a meme name now? I don't know. It kind of does fit a lot of the criteria 
out there. Number five, newcomer to our top five. We should most active doesn't even do this justice. Maybe we should call it topsy turvy, crazy Tom, whatever this list is. It's it's something. It's wish. This is a newcomer to our top ten here. This is ticker symbol wish w i s h. This is actually an online e commerce platform for a company called Context Logic. And this one apparently getting all the meme juice over there on the Reddit forums these days. It's good for an impressive 376,000 contracts. That's a lot of paper for a name I've never heard of before today. So that's a, that's a way to make an entrance here on our top 10. By the way, that would have been our probably winner for most bias paper. It's 87% of that coming on the call side of the ledge. Let's just look back really quickly in the year that's been for Wish. By the way, Wish a year ago was trading 20 bucks. So it's not quite the story I thought of when I hit this chart that it would be 28 cents a year ago and now up to $11.36 where it finds itself right now. No, it's the other way. It's $20. Got up to $32.85 and has since shed pretty much all of that. It was tra- well, it was trading seven seventy six dollars about a week ago. So it has had a nice pop since then. Obviously, that's when the meme kids discovered it. But still, interesting road here for Wish. You slinging Wish? Let us know. 87% of that paper. Come on the call side of the ledger. Number four, it's Neo. They're still lurking in the top 10 there. 448,000 contracts, 78% of that coming on the call side. Number three. So I guess the answer to our question is maybe. <laughs> Number three is Tesla. 536,000 contracts. Only 67% of that coming on the call side of the ledger out there. So Tesla, you know, obviously making headlines for a lot of things these days rallying and i put rally in air quotes today it's only up a couple of points so that's a rounding error in tesla but it is back north of the 600 level 612 coming into today's show there 67 percent of that on the call side number three that means it got toppled by somebody and it got toppled by number two amc so it couldn't quite make the number one spot today amc 1.09 million and actually only 66 percent of that on the call side people have this impression of amc that it's 99 percent calls that is not the case. <laughs> it's right now two-thirds calls and one-third puts out there. So bear that in mind when you're looking for all these juicy verticals out there. They line up sometimes when they do these crazy, you know, June 4th, 145 calls with two hours to go. But a lot of other times there's two-sided paper going on out there. So bear that in mind in AMC. And number one, that means the big dog is back. The king has retained its crown. He kicked these other kids to the curb. He said, if you come for the king, you best not miss because... I'll take my throne back, and I'll kick you all the way back down here. Yes, it's Apple, about 1.2 million contracts out here, 76% on the call side. So Apple, after a bit of a rest, a bit of a reprieve, is back now. Maybe it was usurped briefly, but today he has taken back the crown. Let's see what else is lighting it up out there from an Oracle, from an Oracle, <laughs> from an earnings perspective. Not a ton on the, on the block this week. Oracle, as I just mentioned, gave you a bit of a sneak preview there, as well as H&R Block. And Lazy Boy on Tuesday, not a sexy boy, but a Lazy Boy. Uh, Wednesday, we have Leonard, and Thursday, we have Kroger. So kind of getting into the lighter part of the remainder of the season. Peaking of the season, right now, we're averaging 74%. So as ticked up ever so slightly, it was 72% not too long ago. But last week was still pretty anemic. 62% was the rate for last week. The worst week of this season so far was week two. With 51%, that means if you bought a nice basket of earnings vol, you got back pretty much 50 cents on the dollar. So that's pretty rough. Now, this season as a whole, you got back 74 cents. We have yet to see a season since the pandemic began where we actually got back more money. We actually made money on that trade. When that happens, perhaps that will be the canary in the coal mine, the, the sign that the worm has turned out there. But so far, this season, I hate to break it to you listeners, not the case. The optionsinsider.com is the place to go. Options, news, and articles tab. You can get all that action in your hot little hand, just like this. The reports right now for Oracle, they are popping off tomorrow after the bell. They're at 82, almost $83. They were pricing in 358 in the past. They've moved 409. So they got the memo out there in Oracle land that less ball is more these days. And Kroger's got to them as well. 3871. They were pricing in a buck 84 in the past. They've moved to get this a buck 85. So they got the memo precisely out there. Maybe they could take that off a little bit, but they're pretty much lining up exactly out there let's go to leonard really quickly too they're on the 16th after the bell 92 and three quarters is where they were trading they were pricing in 414 get this listeners in the past they've moved 416 so you know market makers are not fools they've they've gotten the memo if they didn't get it the first few cycles of these 
earnings season during the pandemic. They've had it beaten into their heads a number of times now. You price in more vol at your peril in these names. So then these ones are actually going in precisely with the past move, which is kind of interesting. Let's look really quick. Looks like we got Adobe here as well. So let's go out to them really quickly as well. They're on Friday after the bell. 541 and a quarter. So I guess the death of Flash hasn't hurt them too much. <laughs> they were at $20.73 what they're pricing in. In the past, they've moved 2530. So apparently they've gotten the memo out in, in Adobe as well. Less is more. But you know where more is more? It's the odd block. So let's get to it. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. everybody welcome to the odd block the portion of the show where we unleash the eye of sauron and like i said more is more especially today got some decent sized blocks coming across the radar of our eye of sauron first we're going out to a name we haven't talked about in a while this is bj's wholesale club you know this costco is all over the place here in chicago i can't remember the last time i saw a bj so is there a bj's near you i don't know I, apparently they're still around but i never really see them at least not in this area maybe they're in your neck of the woods bj's right now ticker symbol appropriately enough bj Trading right now, just a little bit shy of 48 bucks, 47.90, up about $14 over the course of the past year. So a good run for them over the past year and about a quarter of a buck or about half a percent today. So as we said, a year ago was trading a wee bit shy of where it is right now. It's about 48 right now. It was 33.87 a year ago. Then it had a nice little run up into late August. It traded up to about 47, so about close to where it is right now. In late August, and then it kind of gave it all right back. By September 17th, it was trading 39 bucks again, and it kind of stayed in that range. Had a few other runs, popped up to 44 and a half on November 19th, and sold off again to 37 and 11. So maybe have some of the lingering concerns over, you know, pandemic and food supply issues and everything else over the course of the last year impacted this. We see this is a pretty volatile chart for effectively a, a wholesale grocery chain. Then they rallied again, got up to, looks like it's Pretty much is 52 week high and late January 27th, right around 49 bucks, 48.81. And then, like clockwork, it gave it up again. Within a couple of sessions, it was trading 42. Within a few weeks, it was trading 38 again. So, kind of gave it up. Then it rallied right back up. This thing is this is a volatile wholesale club. Almost trading 47 again on April 5th. Sold off again 43. Then back up again to about 48 and a half again on May 19th. Gave it up again to about 44 a couple of weeks later. And it's kind of been doing this dance a few times. So it's clearly we're on the apex of that again, threatening that 48 level again over the course of the past few weeks. So let's see what our eye of Sauron found out here. Mr. Rock Lops, you're like this one. Looks like your old friend, the line in the sand, put for some size, if not for some juice. It was 16,000 of the BJ's July 40 puts. So about eight bucks out of the money and a little bit more than a month and change to go, listeners. Going up, these puts were a dime at 20 cents, so not an unreasonable market for BJ's out-of-the-money puts. They went up for 11 cents right off the bid, <laughs> so crushed that bid, got a little extra juice for them, but not much. If you're wondering, that is a 40 ball, pretty much even. So you can argue that's, that's high, but maybe given this chart, it's probably warranted <laughs> out there. The stock, by the way, was 47 and three quarters when these puts went up. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, I know you like this strategy. I know you like this is pretty sizable one of it, but I know you also take a bit of a dim view of blasting out a bunch of puts for 11 cents. So where do you fall on this one? Are you kind of mixed? Are you angry? Are you loving it? What's your spidey sense telling you, sir? Um, again, I like you're right. I, I like to. I prefer to see a little more bucks coming in on this one. Um, uh, are we are we at our Ferrari? But as usual, Ferrari money. You know, up oh, somebody. I don't like. I'm looking at sixteen thousand contracts at eleven cents. You know, I, I think you're about there. Um, probably a low end, like entry level Ferrari. You probably get that for like a buck seventy five yeah, like or so. Used one. Like, yeah, like I, I don't think the you, old Tom Selleck. Yeah, one exactly, exactly. I don't think you're getting a nice new Ferrari for a buck seventy five these days. No, no, no. I don't think so either. So, like the old Tom Selleck Ferraris, you know, uh, Magnum PI. I think. 
Uh, you know, again, use of capital. You know, maybe if somebody's giving you your money for nothing, but um, kind of a low return till July. But you know, who who can argue with the success of the line in the sand put? Um, but uh, usually, you know, I, and I don't know if this is a wildly bullish. You know, I don't think the line of the sand is really a wildly bullish trade. It's just that things aren't going to be disastrous. So uh, I, as I look at BJ's Wholesale Club, 40, what's interesting, uh, you know, it's, I, you know, 40 is a tickle. I think 40 is a tickle, a tickle a bull number considering where BJ's has spent most of its life in the 25 handle until uh, COVID showed up. And then it became kind of a superstar. So I would just go out. I would say this is an this is a this is an interesting one. Um, now the, the earnings have just blown up huge. So again, very very interesting. I would say this is a little more bold than the ones we've seen in the past. And you're not tying up a small amount of capital here. This is 1.6 million shares on a stock below 40 bucks. So you're tying up some capital. I mean, you might look at this and say, oh, I'm getting a buck 75 or so to do this, but that's pretty much covering the cost of your capital allocation. So when you see this, it's not just someone going for a buck 75. They are committing capital to do this out here. So you're right. You, you hope you get a little bit more than this, but you know, the 40 handle, we said this is a pretty volatile stock. It has kissed that level multiple times over the last six months. So it is possible this one could be kissed again. So guess, guess what, listeners? That means we're going to come back to this one, see how our friend Fear Dizzy. Keep all of that, as The Rock Lobster says, inappropriately, girlfriends, Ferrari's money. Send your hate mail to him, not me. Or <laughs> did we have some, maybe a used Ferrari? Or is there something else cooking out there? As you go on out to another name, this is other. This is a newcomer to the odd block. This is Leslie's Inc. This is kind of a newbie day here today. This is a swimming pool supply company. I don't have a pool, so I guess that's probably why I never heard of this name. A ticker symbol, Lesl, L-E-S-L. Let's just call it Leslie. Uh, trading right now about 27 and a half bucks, up about nearly six bucks over the course of the past year and about 35 cents or about one and a quarter percent today. Let's look really quickly. A year ago, it was trading 21.70, kind of sold off a bit to about 19 a change in December. Then it kind of rallied up to 28. So north of where it is right now in December, it's another one that kind of had a tumultuous year. Who, who'd have thunk it? Pool retail was a crazy year for them. But uh, 28 and change, that was in December, right around Christmas. Then it sold off to 25 in January, back up to it's like the high of the year around 31.34 on January 20. Actually, 32.84 was the high of the year on January 27th. Another name that kind of peaked on January 27th. Maybe that's the new June 8th of the year. We'll see. Then it promptly sold off again down to about 20 bucks. Almost broke the 20 handle, 20.93. Then it kind of rallied again by April, was trading nearly 30 bucks again. So it had quite the run there. It sold off in March, rallied again in April. Sold off again in May down to 26, back up to 31 and a quarter a week ago on June 7th, and then promptly selling off again to where it is right now, right around 27 and change. So extremely volatile pool retailer. <laughs> they sell swimming pool supplies and related products. Who knew? Pool chemicals and floaties was such a volatile space. <laughs> to be in. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found. You learn something new every day, Mr. Rock Lobster. You learned about Sexy Boy today. I learned about the volatility of floaties. As we head on into, let's see, our Eye of Sauron found 12,000. So another pretty decently sized block here of the Leslie July 22 half put. So almost exactly $5 out of the money. It's almost the same trade. Maybe it's the same guy, Mr. Rock Lobster. These went up. They were a dime at 25 cents. So a little bit wider for Leslie. He's went up for 14 cents. He's got a, he got a little bit more juice. He got a little bit more price improvement on these. That's a, if you're wondering, listeners, a 46 vol. So a little bit more juice, a little bit more premium, a little bit more vol for this guy. Doing similar size. The stock was a little bit shy at 27, 26.92 when he put these up. So a little bit south of where it is right now. That probably accounts for the little bit better bit of juice he got. So kind of a similar trade, Mr. Rock Lobster. Same term. Similar distance out of them. Actually, exactly. They're both 16% out of the money. <laughs> so, hey, maybe it's the same guy. He really wanted to blast away, draw some lines in the sand on BJ's and uh, Leslie's pool. Rita, do you have a pool? Do you Are you familiar with Leslie's, Mr. Rock Lobster? Uh, I'm not, but they, they do own several brands like Jacuzzi and 
Zodiac and Waterway. Oh, and, they own Jacuzzi. Okay, well, there you go. So they're, uh, you know, and I, I'm sure they just do, I mean, they make all the stuff for swimming pools. Um, <clears throat> you know, like post-COVID, I, I, I've heard of like Leslie's, like it's a, like, it's kind of like a pool emporium type place. There might even be one in Maine, um, possibly. So, um, and I think this is a relatively new IPO, to be honest. I've not seen a lot of earnings history on it and stuff like that. So, uh, interesting. Um, but again, looking like line in the sand, looking for a bargain in this one. Um, that is, what is that, a half a percent till July, not a full percentage. So, you know, again, it's very, very similar MO here, similar dollar take. Um, lots of lots of similarities to the BJ trade. So, on a slow day, they're not looking at a, this is like and this is another trading thing. You know, like I see stocks that I want to own, but they're just not anywhere at prices that I want to pay or for options. So, you sell puts at levels that you want to take them. You just have to make sure that you really want them. So. I'm assuming Mr. Twelve Thousand Lot wants to own some pool supply at twenty-two and a half bucks. So um, that just—it straight up looks like the trade. That's how that trade looks. That does. So we'll come back to both of these. We'll come back to these line in the sand put bros a little bit later on to see how they fared if they kept their what was it fourteen and eleven cents respectively. <laughs> Let's flip the script now. You want someone looking for a little bit of explosive action? To round us out here. So we're going to go out to another newcomer. This is a lot limited. A-L-L-O-T. So a lot, literally. <laughs> this is a formerly a lot communications. This is an Israeli telecom. A ticker symbol A-L-L-T. Trading right now. Excuse me. $20.61. Nice day today. Up about one and a quarter. One thirty. So 6.6% today. So nice little pop for a lot. That's a lot of pop for a lot. A year ago, trading 10 and a quarter. So it's pretty much doubled over the course of the past year. And they were kind of sleepy for most of the year. Still trading 10 and a half in December. So not much in the latter half of last year. Then they kind of kicked it into high gear on January 5th. They went from 10 and a half bucks to the next session by January 8th was trading 1439. So they exploded over the course of that three days. And then uh, over then, let's see, by February 9th, we're trading 17. So they had... Not quite doubled, but about 75% rally from mid-January to mid-February. Then they kind of bounced around in that range. By April 8th, they hit nearly 20 bucks, 1936. That was actually pretty much their high for the year. Then they sold off down to 1605 on May 12th. And right now, as of today, they pretty much blew through that old high, getting up to where they are right now, 2061. So we're pretty much at their 52-week high here, listeners. A nice little pop here for a lot i'll have to look and see if this is uh mimi love or earnings maybe a combination of all of the above but either way we're going to the call side of the ledger this time listen there's no sleepy line in the sand puts this time we're swinging for some fences looking for some pop we got a five thousand lot of the sep so a little bit farther out this time sep 22 half call so about two dollars out of the money Going up for a buck forty-five, pretty much lifting the offer. Like I said, about five thousand times over there on the Philly. The t- stock was a little bit lower, twenty seventeen, when these bad boys went up. By the way, there are earnings between now and this options expiration. They are on August third, so perhaps accounting for a little bit of that juice. It's about a fifty-six and a half vol that they paid for these bad boys, Mister Rock Lobster. We got a different side of the coin. We're swinging for some aggressive fences. They got a little bit of time to work. It's not like the people in Ford who are all lining up for June out of the money calls and are going to see their money go the way of the dodo. This guy's paying a little more, but he's getting a little bit more time. What do you say here on these SEP 22 halves? That's about a buck and change above the 52-week high. What do you think our friend's up to here? I think he's got a chance of making that bridge, or is it, dare I say, a bridge too far in a lot? It's a lot of premium, by the way. <laughs> Well, it's saying here uh, a lot is a global provider of security and monetization solutions. I thought when I saw monetization, it might be a blockchain thing or something like that. Um, but it has sales. Um, it, it it seems to be like a security is kind of buzzwordy right now. With um, um, and I actually have some anecdotal evidence of uh, some of my students and whatnot or. Um, 
businesses that have actually been ransomware. Like they got the note, the ransomware note. Um, so it, it, I, again, a, gl- a growing, uh, growing, for sure, growing field. Like people are going to start spending on this stuff. I think if it's in the security world that I think so, um, 22 and a half, I think is a reasonable price to pay for, uh, these options in September. I don't know if Mr. Tussauds would agree, but, um, you know, I think it, it certainly has potential. Um, and somebody's looking for a lot more upside on this one, but the volatility is relatively low. Um, so you're getting good bang for your buck, but yeah, they're definitely looking for a breakout and, um, uh, a move, um, you know, a, you know, a move to new highs or making new highs. Uh, I do have maybe a, an, I don't know if a lot is on it. I'm looking right now, but uh, I own some calls at ETF Bug, which is a similar business, maybe I think. Um, and I'm, and I think those they're they're almost in the money now. But I think that we could see all time highs in the, that whole space as well as companies start to spend more money on it. So. The ransomware thing is real. And it's all it's all very real. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Again, I got to look at this a lot, but I, I'd say it has a shot. There are reasonable calls to purchase for that time frame. So we got some reasonable ransomware calls, according to the Rock House. So we'll come back to these ones, too. You're right. I did a little bit of digging while you're talking. It does seem like they have some subsidiaries that do some network securities. That could certainly be why in the last few months they've seen some significant upside. You know what else has upside all the time? It's the strategy block. So let's get to it. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, everybody, we've delayed him long enough with talk of lots and and all sorts of other nonsense. Leslie's BJ Holmes, he's champing the bit. He wants to get at you. Mr. Uncle Mike, these are crazy times. These are tumultuous times. Dare I say it, sir. What have you in store for our beloved listeners today? Uh, Well, there's something that I've noticed. I'm doing some math in my head here. And so we just got, we're just kind of, coming on that we're on the back end of a bunch of lockdowns where uh, husbands and wives were uh, alone with each other or with other kids driving them nuts. And the other thing that I'm noticing on this is that I'm getting a lot of calls about clients that are having babies in the near future or um, clients that are just uh, looking for uh, or grandparents that are new grandparents and looking to set something up for their co- college funding. And so I'm noticing a kind of a coincidence between the lockdown and the increased birth rates of a lot of my client base. But uh, I'll let you guys, I'll let our our listeners use their own imaginations with that one. But with that being said, I do want to address something that I am getting a pretty fair amount of questions on lately, and that is saving for college. And so um, I want to just talk about ways with which you can do it and some choices that you have and some ways with which uh, you could possibly use options if it made sense to you in your overall portfolio. So first off, let's talk about the the big dog of all college savings plans, and that's a 529 plan. Uh, every state has their own 529 plan. And uh, within there, you can put money into your 529 plan. I'm not talking about prepaid tuition. I'm talking about uh, putting money into uh, typically some type of a mutual fund, whether it's a stock fund, a bond fund, or a mix of both or whatever. And you put money in after tax and the money grows and grows and grows. Cause as we all know, the market always goes up all the time, <laughs> LOL. And, uh, if the money grows and grows the money you take out, if it's used for educational purposes, the gains are tax free. It's really a great deal from a tax standpoint. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, if, um, God were to tell me that the market were to go straight up and my kids are guaranteed to go to college and they're not going to get any scholarships, I would personally put 100% of all the college savings money for my kids into a 529 plan. However, uh, I don't know if my, I mean, I think my kids will go to college, but you never know. Uh, And I don't know if the market's going to go straight up and they may or may not get scholarships. So because of that, I think it's important to prepare for those three scenarios if something were to happen along those lines. Uh, So how do we prepare for such things? Well, of course, there's other ways with which to save for college. You can just have a 
custodial account in your kid's name. Uh, disadvantage of that, there's not as many tax breaks with that. Uh, and also, you're not going to be, it's not going to, if you are going to get some type of financial aid in some way, shape, or form, which that's the other thing that I've been uh, boning up on lately is uh, the financial aid law or rules that exist with the FAFSA form and things like that. That's the other thing that this increased birth rate has kind of gotten me to brush up on a little bit. Uh, custodial accounts will uh, hurt you more than a 529 plan would. Uh, so that's another disadvantage of it. Uh, there's also covered L accounts. Uh, you can they act similar to a 529 plan, but a lot of my clients make too much money to qualify for those. So with that, let's focus on the 529 plan and talk about how we can overcome those disadvantages that I brought up. Well, the first one, what if uh, I'll, I'll talk about my situation? Uh, what if my oldest son doesn't want to go to college or gets a full ride scholarship? Uh, of course, my, my son's starting his freshman year of high school. And let me tell you guys, he's the, he's the greatest high school football player that's ever uh, been known to man. So there's my, my biased dad moment for the time. But with that being said, let's say he decides not to go to college or gets a full ride scholarship. Well, with that, the 529 money that we have in his name, we can use for my daughter, his younger sister. And for that, there's no penalty in doing so. So let's say we save up all this money for my son. He gets a full ride and um, doesn't or doesn't go to college. Well, then to overcome that risk, so to speak, we can put that money towards my daughter's education. So that's a way with which we can kind of overcome that risk or mitigate it somewhat, or that's as the option trader in me is looking at that. Uh, now, let's say that <clears throat> the main risk that I'm personally concerned with, with all this is what if the market goes down? I know it's kind of a scary thought for people, but it can exist. And let's say that we do have it to where the market doesn't work favorably. This is something that we've done with him. And uh, we did this in the early years. Uh, the, mar the money in the 529 plans on my son's 14 and my daughter is 12 right now, but the money in the 529 plans was mostly stock-based. Of course, we've had a really nice run in the stock market since they've been born, uh, which has really helped this out quite a bit. But in the early years, we had a separate account to where I was uh, buying a bunch of puts to where if the market were to tank, then we would have that protection in place. Now, I can't really get, there's a lot more to it than just, ah, just buy some puts. What the heck? There's a lot more to it than that. It was a very uh, calculated risk with which we took. It was very uh, strategic in how we set it up. But quite frankly, the market's gone up so much that we've blown out all those accounts. Now, obviously, the gains we've made in the 529 plans have far exceeded that. But I can sleep at night knowing that if the market does go down, we have those that put strategy in place in a separate account. Now, at this stage, my son's getting closer to college and the allocation is such to where there's much less market exposure he's four years away which quite frankly that scares me uh, how, how fast he's growing up but and at this point in time we don't have any puts in place because we're just allocating because we're kind of in the the later years to where uh, we're just kind of i hate to say on cruise control but we're not near as aggressive with the allocation but the put served us well because we were able to have that much market exposure in the early years and save up a pretty decent amount of money towards it. So uh, I'll be talking about this on my blog today. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa. I'll be releasing it in the next couple of hours and uh, to talk more about it and uh, how you can have college savings options with options. There's a lot more we can unpack with this, but uh, check out my blog. It'll be a lot more detailed. There we go. Check it out. Uncle Mike at Mike Tusa on the old Twitters as we keep on rolling for our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where you, we, actually, <laughs> where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until our next episode on Thursday. We're also going to squeeze in another question from one of our one of our pro members here, regular questioner, my boy Luigi. This is for you specifically, Mr. Rock Lobster. So I didn't want you to leave without at least seeing this. He says, when the lobster mentioned being, quote, cheaper, I believe he's talking about the top of the show, you're talking about volatility. He says, does he mean the difference between the call and the put is less than the difference between the strike and the stock price. 
Oh, I guess he listened to one of Mark's videos on YouTube about put call parody, and he wants to make sure he got it. Were you talking about uh, synthetics and put call parody earlier that I missed, Mr. Rock Lops? I believe you were just talking about broad ball levels, correct? I, I thought it was just raw ball levels, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the context. You know, it's like it's like my own students, unless you tell me exactly what the what the – what the idea was it's hard for me to remember all the all of the variations so but um yeah but sometimes uh the synthetic can be cheaper but I, i'm not sure we covered that on the show all right Luigi, you got you got a few seconds you're listening live if you want to hit us up with exactly what your details are meanwhile mr rock Lobster, what are you watching until our thursday episode sir um yeah i'm watching this curious careers bid for vix I'm, I'm watching the gold markets like everything just feels a little too complacent to me right now to be honest like a little bit too much of Fed uh, wa- wa- waving their wand, and, you know, and Biden does the G7. Thing. It all just is a little, it's a little complacent after this year of COVID, but I'm more than happy to watch the ball tank and go to zero and nothing happens. But um, I'm, it's, it, has, it has a whiff of the surreal about it right now. I'll just say that much. A whiff of the surreal. You can say that about a lot of the markets these days out there now mr uncle mike same question for you sir what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until our next episode on thursday uh i mean i'm I'm not really doing much with it but i'm watching bitcoin because it is always fascinating to see those large moves like that and uh, what can happen with that Uh, also watch i'm watching the vix i mean i think we're kind of at that point to where are we going to go back above 20 again or are we going to actually go down below 15 and um looking to see if it has a move and then uh, looking to see if we can break away from this 4200 level on the spx all right everybody that music means that's it for these sexy boys at least but don't worry if you're listening live stay tuned we'll be back in exactly an hour in the meantime we'll pump some fun stuff in to the old live chat if you're listening after the fact just hit next on your device of choice, because the crypto rundown will be there. Uncle Mike, you heard it. Even Uncle Mike, the devout S&P bull that he is, has pretty much spent a lot of his time watching Bitcoin out there these days. So if you're not at least paying tangential attention to what the hell is going on in these markets, they certainly are linked to Tesla, which is a big part of the S&P and everything else going forward these days. So these markets, the lines are being blurred more and more every week. So if you're not tuned in to Crypto Rundown, I know a lot of you are. Stay tuned. Exactly an hour. We'll have some good stuff with the folks from Genesis Volatility, the ones who give us all this great data and break down all the analytics. We'll have some great answers about what's going on behind the scenes. Dare I say it, the flow masters of the crypto space. So stay tuned for that. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with the unclist of Mike's. He did win our guessing game earlier today. Mr. Uncle Mike, if folks are intrigued, they want to learn more. Maybe they want to talk to you about the uh, using options in the old 529. Where should they go? What should they do? Well, I would say in addition to the 529, but yeah, go to stcharleswealth.com, check out my website, you can contact me there, or follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tussaw, uh, more than happy to have a conversation with anyone on, on this, such a topic, uh, because I'm becoming more and more well-versed in it, uh, as, the, as the, the birth rates of my clients are definitely increasing. Well, there you go, check them out. At Mike Tussaw on the old Twitters or stcharleswealth.com is the place. It's like Luigi. He was just talking about general put call parody there, Mr. Rock Lobs. It wasn't addressing something from today. So we'll we'll get to this uh, tomorrow. Maybe we'll try to squeeze it in on uh, even tomorrow's Q&A with the once in future Dr. Vic. So stay tuned for that. You are a pro member, Luigi. So you'll be able to hear that along with the rest of our members coming up tomorrow. And Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks are intrigued, they want to check out what you got going on. Where should they go? What should they do? Come on over to Oxford.com, go to memberships, uh, check out my fancy vol trading club. Having a great year, uh, even though vol's not as exciting as it is, but it's doing okay. So uh, products are doing good, and I'm uh, running a couple things, and things are going pretty well. So I got no complaints, and uh, if you want to get your option learner on and see how these things trade, come on over. All right, you come on over to the land of all things vol, a.k.a. option pits. Dot com. On behalf of the greasiest of meatballs and the unclest of mics, and indeed myself, thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, and listening live. If you're in the latter category, stay tuned. We'll pump some fun stuff in here. We'll be back in 56 minutes to break down the exciting world of crypto volatility. There's a little bit to talk about over there. Got a great guest to help me do just that. And we're back again tomorrow. 
Tuesday is rapidly becoming pro Q&A day. Another great guest. Talk about all this madness in the world of volatility. The once in future Dr. Vicks Wednesday. You know, we, we, we thought we were going to do two last week. We got them back this week to do another one. We're going to do another live options boot camp this week. So stay tuned for that. Of course, you have OPR on Wednesday as well. And then Thursday back for episode two of the Option Block. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.